Alrighty guys, welcome back to another Docker video. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be learning about default commands. It's gonna be thrilling, trust me. But before we hop right into that, there's one other little bit of info that I wanted to mention, not dealing anything with default commands, but it's just something that as you start out learning Docker and you're reading through the documentation, it may just seem a little bit confusing. So again, let's just hop right into it. And that is this. So we already know that you can run commands like uh, Docker run hello world. And let's just go ahead and run that. Okay, we already saw what that did in the last video. Now, you may also see a formatting like this, where instead of it saying Docker run hello world, it would say Docker container run hello world. Now, if we run this, Okay, it looks like both of those commands did the exact same thing. So what is the difference between Docker run hello world and Docker container run hello world? Well, check it out. So as Docker CLI, which is essentially this Docker tool right here, as it evolved over the years, the Docker team realized that they needed better formatting. In other words, there are commands like docker run and uh, docker version, docker star, docker create, and all these commands were piling up over the years and the docker team realized, okay, we need a better way to organize all of these commands. So before we had something like docker run hello world. So docker, of course, is the tool that we're using the CLI. The run word right here, this is called the command and this hello world, this is of course just the image. Now this other syntax right here, we of course have the CLI still, we have the command, we have the image, but then we have this extra container keyword. This is actually called the context. Now, according to the official Docker statement, they said the old command syntax is still supported, but we encourage everyone to adopt the new syntax. So even though Docker run hello world is still going to work fine and if you see it in you know any configuration files or any docs online it's no issue but what i am going to try to start doing in these tutorials is add the context because it's what docker prefers it's a little bit more formal and i know the new boston is not always the most formal tutorials but uh we'll try to stick with the standards for this one so anyways uh like i said has nothing to do with the default commands we're going to be learning just a little bit of information to help clear up any confusion as you're learning docker all right so hopefully you enjoyed that little history <laughs> the little history lesson now let's get to the fun part and that is default commands so let me just go ahead and run docker container run hello world to demonstrate this again and check it out so whenever we run the container what it does is it prints out this message right here, hello from Docker. So, okay, how did this hello world image know to print that text out? Well, it is because this image, the hello world one right here, it came with a default command. Now, these commands are commands that run right after the container is created. You can think of them kind of like startup commands. Maybe that's even a better term for it. So again, like I said, the hello world default command is set to print out hello from Docker and all this other stuff. However, we can indeed overwrite that default command. Now, instead of working with the hello world image, and I'll explain why at the end of this video, let's go ahead and repeat this same one instead on an image called BusyBox. So I already have this downloaded. So whenever I run it, you're going to see nothing display. And this is because unlike that hello world image, not all images come with a default command. This busy box right here, this is just a very simple image that combines a lot of tiny common Unix utilities. Like it can echo statements, it can uh, list, basically all those little Unix tools busy box comes with. Think of it like a super lightweight uh, Unix server. So the reason I wanna use this one is because right after this image name, we can have some command like list. Okay, this not only starts up this container, but also lists out. And again, these aren't the same files that exist on your operating system. These are actually part of the container itself, but just pointing out that we can customize this default command. And it doesn't have to be something like list. It can be also something like, I wanna echo 
bacon out. So of course, start this container and then whenever I start it up, just echo out bacon. Why would you wanna do that? I'm not sure, but you can do it. So now we can see that there are some images that come with default commands and there are other ones that come with no default commands. In either case, if there is one that exists already, we are free to override it whenever we start up the container. Now, the last thing I want to point out is why did I choose to use BusyBox rather than Hello World for this tutorial? And that is because of this. You know how I said that BusyBox comes with all those little Unix utilities already built in? Well, Hello World actually does not. So unlike before where I can run Docker container run BusyBox echo bacon, if I try to run it with Hello World, echo bacon, it freaks out. And I can even do this with a more simple command, if you want to call it that, which is list, and check it out. So these tweak out because, let me clear my screen so I can show. Believe it or not, Hello World, even though it's a very lightweight image, it doesn't even include those very basic utilities such as LS and Echo. So that's why I decided to use BusyBox for this tutorial. Again, not really important for understanding default commands, but just wanted to point that out as well because if you try to you know, use some images with some of these tools, it may not work and that is why. So hopefully you guys have a little bit better understanding of why sometimes you see that container keyword and why sometimes you don't. Again, that has to do more with the history of Docker, but also more importantly, default commands, which are just startup commands that run after your container is created, and then you are free to override them with your own custom startup commands if you want. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next video.